the Panasonic BGH-1, otherwise known as the box camera. When this was released at the end of 2020, it, it was a head turner and then a head scratcher because Panasonic has, I don't believe it's released anything like this before, but it, there's other cameras that were, uh, that have come out years prior that are similar to this. Black Magic, I believe, first came out with one that had no screen and it was meant for gimbals and drones and it was really small. So I thought that that emulated that. And then there was also the Z cam. And then going back to the red cameras, red cameras uh, started out with the brain and then you built around it. The reasons why I purchased the BGH-1 is over the past two years since the uh, pandemic started, I've been primarily doing two lines of work for production. I've been doing a lot of interviews, sit-down interviews, and I've also been doing live streaming or things that go to the web, either a virtual interview that's pre-recorded or something that's live streaming, live streamed. And I've done that a lot, and that's where my income has been coming to recently. So I've slowly been upgrading and doing research and trying to compile more and more uh, cameras that are really just meant to sit on a tripod and film in, uh, without any action, without a lot of movement, and then also be capable of connecting to a computer and live streaming. One of the more recent purchases that I made this year in a, uh, before the BGH-1 is I bought the Panasonic CX-10. The CX-10, this is Panasonic's prosumer camcorders. And uh, this, the the primary feature of this one, it, and th there's the X2000 and the X1500 as well, uh, that's very similar to the CX-10. The, the only differences are the codex and the HDSDI out. But the big selling factor with, with the, this brand of cameras is their live streaming capabilities. So you can connect this directly to a computer and it, it will, the, the encoder is built in. They also, with the new GH5, the GH5 version 2, that has that capability as well. So Panasonic is, seems like Panasonic is taking the lead actually from Sony and uh, JVC and Fuji and Canon by going the direction of the, the live event, live streaming technology. So that's in this camera, and I shot an entire wedding. I did a li I live streamed a wedding using this camera, and uh, in this in that case, I didn't use their their USB out, and uh, which you're able with an adapter do with their USB. They have a US. This one has a USB adapter, so you can connect an Ethernet cable and and stream with with a, a bigger connection and, and do uh, full HD. And I think I, you can do 4K, but I, I just did full HD. And I did an entire wedding live stream with this camera and I was able to zoom and everything and it worked out great, and, which is why I bought this camera. It wasn't in low light. Luckily, this was an outdoor wedding, so there was a lot of light. Since this has a small sensor, it is not good It is not good in low light. But because I was outdoors in the daytime, this was a very ideal cam, camcorder to get. So now when I'm more indoors and I want more of a cinematic look, but uh, it's not so cinematic. Uh, the BGH-1 checked a lot of boxes here. And one of the, th well, first of all, this can do everything that the uh, Panasonic GH5S can do. So here is the Panasonic GH5S. Uh, I have it in a small rig cage. This is the first generation. The GH5S is supposed to be identical quality to the uh, BGH-1. Although the BGH-1, because of the new processor or whatever is going on in the inside, even though it uses the same sensor as the GH5S, it's supposed to be slightly better in image quality and dynamic range. And I'm going to test that. I will do a lot of test footage in future videos. This is just my first impressions of it. I can't tell right off the bat when I, when I just started doing some test shots myself, but I will put it under a bigger microscope to, to just to see the differences. When, when you pair it with a, with a decent lens, like this one, here's the 12 to 35, this is a 2.8. At 2.8, with, with the dual gain sensor that this has, I can shoot at 3200 ISO, 3, ISO, and it looks very clean. The other reason why I got this is for the power consumption. So uh, a lot of my work, or our sit-down interviews that I was doing, so whenever I had 
he was using my GH5S for the sit down interviews. I had to rig this up with with a battery pack with a V mount and a dummy battery, and which is which is fine. There's no big issue using that. It's just it made it very bulky and a lot more pieces had to be uh, put on to in order to make this function like a proper a documentary camera for long interviews. With this camera, you have several power options. The first power option is this battery. And this battery, the, the when you first purchase the BGH-1, it doesn't come with a battery, which kind of stinks. All, all you get when you first get this is it comes in a regular box. And you get this camera, and you just get the power adapter. This is all you get in the box when you when you spend two thousand dollars for this camera. So unless you already have these batteries, you're gonna have to buy another one. And the official Panasonic batteries, these these ones, the the uh, the VBR fifty nines, they're not that cheap. These run, I think they're about a hundred and fifty hundred hundred and fifty to hundred ninety dollars, depending on the sale each. And this is the smaller one. Luckily, I already had a couple of these batteries because it's the same battery that's in the, the CX-10. The CX-10 uses the same battery, so that was, it just made it a better deal for me to, to, to buy the BGH-1 because it used, I already have a, a couple of these batteries. These, put it in here, and this battery, oh my gosh, this is, I think it's gonna last me four hours, at least four hours of battery life because this doesn't consume that much power. And one battery or two of these batteries as, a, as another back, I can shoot an entire interview. Another way to power it is with a V-mount. So I, I am gonna purchase a V-mount battery and system specifically for this camera. And then you can also power this camera if you're doing live streaming. It powers in with the LANC port. This here, if you have those big, uh, I don't think it's a regular Ethernet cable, it's one of those, the, it's the more robust ones, the professional ones that you plug in here. And when you, it, this whole camera can po be powered by that one connection and, and you can send all your video and power the camera off of this one Ethernet connection. This is an amazing webcam. You have to get a free Panasonic app. They make two, there's one called the Panasonic Tether and then there's one called the Panasonic Webcam. I think you need both to install both of these apps on your computer, Mac and Windows. So when you install those apps, right here, they have a USB-C port. And if you're, so if you're not gonna use, if you don't have that heavy duty and your, and your uh, place isn't set up to have a stream with uh, ethernet, you can just get a regular USB cable. I think it needs to be uh, the 3.0 size. And then you plug the USB in here, and then you plug the other part into your computer. And without having to use uh, a capture card, the app, log. you can open it up on your computer and then stream full HD uh, and have total control of all of the settings just uh, using their apps interface on your computer. I'm gonna show that in future videos, but I, I did a test of it. It was a little funky. I had a little bit of issues with it, but I, I needed more pra I needed to just more practice with it. So once I get it and nail it down and find all of its quirks, I'll do a, a proper review of it. But um, out of the box, this is an amazing webcam. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, open up this cage that I just bought and try it on and talk a little bit about why I chose Tilta. Here's the Tilta, official Tilta cage for the BGH-1. They come in different kits. I got the kit A. I got the, it, it in black. It comes in black and uh, gray. Here's the cage. Has your rosette mounts built in. Yeah, those aren't removable. You have your RE. RE connectors, have a cold shoe here, here, and this is also a nano rail. Up top, uh, you don't have a nano rail, you have just a hot shoe there, and it comes with other mounts here. Impressive, Tilta. It went all out with their little mount here. Okay, here's what the BGH-1 looks like with the tilt cage and I have a 12 to 35 lens here and then the standard battery 
I have up here a free world monitor. This is a 5.5 inch monitor and I'm using the tilt a cold shoe mount. It tilts in 360 and uh, 180 back forth. And the monitor I have powered with a Sony MP, MP battery. So I don't need to plug that in just yet, but in the future, when I get the V mount, uh, the V mount is gonna have an extra D taps and I will power the monitor and the camera on, on the V mount battery. This is the Arca Swiss. So this cage came with the three different mounts, the, the Arca Swiss, and then this is the Manfrotto. This one's a, a ha half the size of a full plate. I don't know why they did half the size, but this one's Manfrotto, you can swap out. And then this is the one it, it, it was packaged, it came in the box with. I don't know what size that is, but it's, it's, it's a lot bigger. But yeah, this feels pretty solid. I don't think you can really operate this camera handheld without this. Um, I don't do drones or gimbals, so I know a lot of people who are first interested in the box camera they are interested in it as a drone or a uh, something you could mount on a on a one-handed gimbal. But for my uses, if I wanted to go handheld, I can. But now that I'm fully rigged out, this could be my interview setup. And the uh, one thing I don't like about this rig right now is that on the top, you don't have a nano rail. I have a lot of nano rail accessories. So for example. I had this nano rail monitor mount, like on my GH5S, since this is a small rig, small rig has, the, they really have a lot of nano rails. So I got this extra nano rail here, and then this slides on like that, and I could lock, lock my monitor in that way, which I like the nano rail system. This one doesn't have that option, it's only a cold shoe. So if you had, I do have, Tilta's uh, their handle. This is a pretty big handle for, for this size camera. I think, I'm not gonna, I don't know if I'll use this, but they have here, their system is a, uh, this is a quarter 20. Well, there's a quarter 20 here, and then this is their hot shoe or cold shoe mount. So what they want you to do with their, with their, I don't know how much this is, like a, this is like 50 or 50 or $70 handle. They want you to slide it in here and then have it screw in. And once this is there, then you have this handle and it's on there really tight. Uh, very, very well made design, uh, even though it's, it's has tilt a, tilt a branding everywhere. But I think it's a little too big for this camera. So I'm gonna take this out right here. I cannibalized a few parts and I, I made myself my own nano rail. I'm surprised that there's uh, nobody makes it. Oh, I found a couple manufacturers that make something like this, but it didn't have a lot of high ratings. So what I did was I bought a small rig. Uh, what is this? This is a 1933. It comes like this, has its has two bolts. And here's what a uh, NATO rail is. This is a th thin version. And I got this one because there's other manufacturers that make nano rails, but they don't have the safety pins on the on the sides, which is what I wanted. Like, uh, what was it, nineteen, twenty dollars? And then I have this. This is the side handle that came with this monitor. It was right here. That's what this uh, this feel a uh, feel world and other monitors have a tilty arm that connects to the side. So I took that off, and if you look here on the base here, you can see that this can come off, and let me just pull that off right now. And then here, you have a cold shoe with this larger surface area to clamp down. So all I do is put this here. Small rig also includes, I think it also includes this hex wrench. You have a hex wrench here. So now what you have is a cold shoe to nano rail mount. That I don't see other, a lot of places where you can buy this, so I just made my own. So you take this and then you put it maybe sideways here. So there's a little bit of a distance, which I don't like that much, but now I have a full nano rail on the, on the top, so I can take my nano rail handle Every, everything here is metal. I'm not as worried about being rough with this. And yeah, this isn't the best, <laughs> but it works, seems to work. One of the drawbacks that initially turned me off 
using the BGH-1 or purchasing the BGH-1 is that since it did not come with a, with a monitor, not a built-in monitor, a lot of what I do when I'm shooting interviews is I don't leave it on continuous autofocus when, when I'm shooting interviews, I, I, but I do like to recheck focus and to change focus throughout a long interview. So what I did with the Panasonic GH5S is that I would have this out here and I would have an, an extra monitor. I had a seven inch monitor to check focus and to see the image better. But what I would do is I would touch to focus. I would touch the screen on the inter person I'm interviewing their, their faces. I would touch it to verify that it was in focus and it does it really fast. And then I would switch over to man, switch back to manual. And I would do this because I'm very paranoid about focus when it comes to sit down interviews. That's the worst thing to do is to have focus that's too thin. So if the subject leans forward or back, you, you lose their focus uh, when, when you're shooting by yourself. If you have a focus puller, you don't worry about that. But I, I often shoot by myself. So anyways, I didn't want to buy this camera because I needed some kind of monitor where I could touch and get lock in the focus, then switch back to manual. So at first, I was thinking, okay, if, if, even if I do have the best monitor here, uh, it's not going to allow me to touch focus. So it only allows me to see the image. So when I found out that this has very fast Bluetooth capabilities, here's my iPod Touch. This is a seventh generation. There's a Lumix Sync app. This is connected via Bluetooth. So I can't go too far away for, uh, with this, but it's wireless. And you can see that there's, there's some latency, but the latency isn't that bad. Now that I have my iPod Touch, Wirelessly, I can control every almost everything in the camera. So here are all my basic settings with exposure. So I say I go to ISO, I can adjust the ISO. The best part about this is that I can also do autofocus. Right there, the autofocus is enabled. Touch, boom, now that's in focus. Now I'm in manual focus. Now wherever I drag this, boom. Now that's in focus. Say I want that background in focus. Tap. Now that's in focus. I am recording. The camera is recording. You can see here on the corner, that's my runtime. I'm in manual focus. So let's say I'm doing the interview and oh, the background's in focus, but I want my subject in focus. Hit there. Hit that. Oh, no, right here. This is what I want. Hit the, hit the autofocus, boom. So I can focus while I'm recording. If I have one of these clamps, these foam clamps, here's my run, new run and gun setup. Just using my iPod Touch. And it's in almost in real time. And that is freaking amazing. This is what made me confident that this is gonna work for me. So I'm gonna make more videos uh, about the BGH-1. I'm gonna do a lot of test footage. I'm gonna compare it with the GH5, uh, the GH5S, with the CX-10. I'm gonna uh, use it more and get more familiar with it so I can give a better review of, of different features, uh, specifically the webcam feature. And uh, yeah, so right now this is a really great camera, I think, that's under the radar in 2021 and 2022. All right.